I was at Nika in Chicago recently, and I'm, every time I'm there, I love checking out what Schneider Electric has. So Schneider has cool things that they're developing this year. Check these out. Mr. Hunter, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you too. We're at Nika. You guys always have like the best of everything. So I'm just here. I see this in front of me. What is the big important thing that you want the world to know yeah. about this? Yeah, so this is our integrated power center. It's really centered around uh, the installation of low voltage panel boards and transformers at the end of the day. For the contractor, next time they're hanging transformers, we ask that they reconsider that application. Look at, you know, getting that transformer off the floor, getting it down, you know, at a ground level. Yeah. The, at the end of the day, you're, for the space that the, the panel boards take up, we can get all that together and integrated and pre-wired from the factory. Yeah, this is fascinating because hanging transformers is something we all hate doing. Heavy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think yeah, 75 kVA and... weighs 500 pounds. So yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. So what you're looking at here is a really an EV application, but it's really about transformer and panel integration, right? So you're looking at a uh, low voltage transformer, 225 kVA in this example. And the breakers that you see mounted in the transformer cell are actually the secondary or main breakers for the panels above. Okay. So that's all come pre-wired from the factory. Imagine this product with you know two pole sixties in it sitting in a parking deck somewhere feeding downstream level two EV charging application. Yeah. But it could easily be a, just a low voltage 75 kVA transformer, uh, 480 volt panel, uh, 208 volt panel, all pre-wired from the factory. So it's it seems rather customizable then. If it I is. needed to swap a transformer, I could do that. Yep. Um, what about the actual panel boards themselves? Is that very customizable or are you kind of set with certain uh, panel boards? So one of the biggest questions we get from consultants in the industry is, this looks special, it's probably unique. And the answer is absolutely no. These are the same okay. transformers that you would go buy at an electrical distributor, same panel boards, breakers, everything is consistent, standard. Okay. So for example, if you had a 75 kVA transformer that you had some issue with it. You could literally go down to a distributor and buy 75 kVA. As long as it like for like swap, it will literally slide in and bolt into place. Wow. And you're doing it on the ground rather than having to uh, fight that 100%, area. 100%. Yeah. Okay. So the plexiglass. Yeah. Is this just for Nico? Yeah, it is. Okay. I it was is. like, that does not seem it is. And the LED strange. lights too. How customizable is it though? Like if I want a certain a number of spaces in my panel board, yep. does it just come with what it comes with or can I spec things? No, 100%. You send us a electrical one line panel schedules. Okay. That's what you're going to get back that type of uh, build out in the panel board yourself. Right. So if you've okay. got a two pole 20 amp breaker here, that's, what it, that's where it'll be. Is there anything internally that we need to know about? Like, is there any, like, maybe open this up and kind of see? Yeah, you absolutely okay. can. You know, when you think about electrical installation, this, this traditionally, you can't stack panels above a transformer. So inherently that configuration spreads out. We think on average for two panels and a transformer, it's about 80 to 90 inches of wall space. Wow, well, yeah. because these sure. panels are front aligned, yeah. Based off a of bracket, now we're in a 42 inch structure. Oh, so damn. we're saving space. I didn't space. even think about yeah. that. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. Yeah. So it really does help with the footprint. We save on average about two thirds of wall space as, as you would in traditional installation. I was wondering because it doesn't, this is deeper than the back of this cavity. So That's right. Yeah. There? If you look at it from the side, this is a 24 inch deep structure. Is there any utilization for the back or is it all ventilation space? All ventilation. So Ambient air pulls in, heat chimneys behind the panel boards, ah. and out and vents out. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. That's really all I got. Absolutely. Really Absolutely. Thomas, nice to meet you. I'm Dustin. Nice to meet you, Dustin. What do we have here? What's, what is this crazy guy in front of us? Uh, this is our mini power zone. It's a low voltage unit substation okay. listed to UL 1062. We have them available from 3 kVA through 30 kVA single phase and three phase. It's an integrated solution that allows you to have a small amount of power quickly installed because it comes pre-assembled from the factory. Okay. The device has a transformer that converts 480 to 208Y120 if it's three phase, right. 12240 if it's single phase. We are just launching a 480Y277 option as well. 
And is it all under 30 kVA? All under 30 kVA. Okay, so this is what, a five? This is a five, five kVA, kVA as an okay. example. There's three physical sizes. There's the three through the 10 kVA single phase. There's the 15 through the 25 kVA single phase. And then there's the 15 through 30 kVA three phase. So there's physically three different dimensional sizes for the devices. Okay. And then this has a panel board inside of it, right? So it's stacking a transformer. And a panel board and the main disconnect. Okay. So if we look on the inside, this is our load center option. Okay. We also have the option for the NQ interior. Oh. And the 480 uses our NF interior. Okay. So the NQ load center only takes on the plug-in breakers. The load center or the QO center takes both plug-on or bolt-on breakers. Right. Okay. And then the NF will take the E-frame breaker for the distribution. Okay. And you got this blocking. So this is a secondary barrier. Okay. It barriers off the H-frame breaker. We always use the H-frame breaker on the entire product line. You can obtain the H-frame at three AIC levels. Okay. You can get the standard 18 AIC, you can get the 25 AIC, or you can get the 65 AIC awesome. uh, as uh, options when we sell it with the QO exterior. So, so do you, when would the, you spec everything that you want prior to getting one of these? Uh, you could spec it as advanced, or we normally see that we want a unit substation or a mini power zone or a power zone center. Those are some of the brands or names that you hear in the industry. Okay. Um, How heavy is this? I just imagine. So um, the transformer is where all the weight is. For sure. Uh, the device can be separated with bolts on the back if you want to mount the transformer first. Okay, you cool. would have to disconnect it. Uh, there is no transformer in here today. So we've removed 70 pounds from the right. display. <laughs> uh, the transformer is embedded in sand and resin. So it's a resin encapsulated transformer. Oh, wow. So specifically designed for outdoor applications. Okay. We do offer it in a complete stainless steel enclosure. So if you have a corrosive environment, we can offer it as a type 3X application. So okay. it's come standard as 3R but it's also available in stainless steel, which would meet a 3X application. So 3R, but corrosive resistant. So are these only designed to be outdoors or you're just giving it that 3R so that no matter where you use it, you're good? We just designed it as 3R and then you can place it wherever you want. Okay. Uh, some of the applications we see it is a guard house in front of a large uh, uh, commercial property. They can pull two legs of 480 out to the guard house. They can hang this on the side because they're going to want 120, 240 in the guardhouse. Mm -hmm. So they get to save one conductor. They don't have to pull all the way. Conductor is smaller because you're pulling yeah. at 480 instead of 240, 120. It's a service entrance rated. So it becomes service entrance rated there at the facility. Draw out of your new ground rod and now you've got 240, 120 at your building. Oh, that's outstanding. Uh, uh, at the end of your driveway. Yeah, and it's all you know on the same plane, so you don't have to worry about transformer below not being able to put the panel. Like yep. that's really clean. I like that. All right, Victor. So we've got a 300 series transfer switch. Um, what do people need to know about this this year? Yeah, so we actually just launched a brand new feature on it called predictive outage detection. We're trying to advance the type of sensing switches can do to minimize downtime. Okay. So we started thinking to ourselves, what can we do if maybe we can predict the power failure before it happens Whoa. and take action on that? So I'm sure you've been in your house before and you've seen the lights flickering yeah. during a storm and you're yeah. like, oh man, I think power might go out soon, right? Yeah. And we kind of built off that concept. So transfer switches normally when power fails, takes a little bit of time to recognize the failure and then transfers the way it just did, right? Yeah. To avoid any nuisance transfers and stuff like that. But the problem with that is that if you have a transient, like a flickering or something like that, it doesn't transfer. It just goes back and forth. And that could be a sign of a, a power failure coming because, you know, wind blowing the lines or something. Yeah. Or that can damage the loads itself, right? So what can we do to eliminate that? So we added a feature to our controller that I'll turn on now. Go to settings, features, predictive outage detection, and I'll turn that on. And now when that flickering is on, you can actually configure it so that it can either go ahead and start the generator and keep it on hot standby so you don't have to wait for the gen to start, which minimizes the downtime, or just go ahead and transfer over. So it protects the loads from being exposed to that flickering that could damage things like compressors and whatnot. Okay. Uh, and it's potentially avoiding the outage altogether, not just protecting them. That's so. really great. Well, thank you so much, man. No problem. Great to meet thank you. you. Yeah. So what is this guy right here with all of these crazy 
sensors or leads? What is this? Uh, this is a factory option from Schneider Electric. It monitors your connection points inside the transformers. So each okay. of these thermal couples will go to the four secondary connection points and then the six primary connection points. Okay. There are the three that are made by the contractor, but we also ship three tap connections. So we're gonna monitor those tap connections as well as the three connection points that are made by the contractor. Okay. The contractor might move those taps, so this will be connected to that tap wire, so if they do move it, it will still be monitored if they choose to use the tap. So it's a way to monitor thermal activity at actual terminations inside of a transformer. That is correct, and it continuously monitors it. Okay. So it's gonna continuously monitor it. You get to set the temperature that you want the alarm to occur. Since okay. it's a 90 degree C log, most people are sending it just below 90 degrees C. When it does overheat, this green light becomes a red and it okay. becomes flashing. The flashing counts to tell you which terminal that is exceeding the heat limit. Oh, so you'll no be way. know exactly which location has exceeded the temperature. So you know which one you might need to check the torque okay. or see if there's something else that's causing the heat to be excessive. So how does this mount then? Is this something that can go anywhere or does it have to go on the transformer? So since it's a factory only option, we mount it on the right top of the device when we ship it from the factory. Okay. Uh, it is designed for either outdoor or indoor applications. So we actually gasket where we mount it so no water will come through those ingress points. Uh, okay. So it can be done outdoor or indoor. You would still have to add the weather shields for the outdoor application, but when we mount it from the factory, we've designed it to comply with both indoor and outdoor. So it's okay. a type 12 add. Oh, that is really cool. What's the best use case or are like the jobs that you've been probably using this the most? What kind of use cases have you seen the most of? Right? So we have seen this be installed on tr low voltage transformers in data centers where they can continuously monitor it instead of just taking once a year snapshot of that thermal conditions of their lungs. Okay. We do have the ability to put a gateway in here and the gateway will allow you to connect it to Snyder Electric's PME software. So you can actually see the temperatures you can set up notifications, so if those temperature exceeds what's set up in the software, you'll get a notification that this transformer has a device. The PME will also tell you which connection point it is, yeah, and okay. you'll know which connection point to check when you open up the transformer. Okay, and I know, like, obviously you would prefer everybody be using PME, but if it if they don't use PME, can it still have uh, go to third-party software? Yes, the gateway will allow you to connect to anybody's third party. They would have to develop their dashboards themselves. Okay. But in our PME, the dashboard's already pre-programmed. Okay. That's really useful, man. I think that's awesome. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you gained something from that. And I'll see you in the next one.